John Lennon, musician, activist, and all around non controversial figure. But did you know he also made films, including such things as Flies Roaming a Woman's Body, Lots and Lots of Legs, and a full on film of his Norwegian Wood? Most of them were made with his wife, Yoko Ono, around the late 60s and early 70s, when he left some small indie band he was in. The films were directed by both John and Yoko, so sometimes it was just her, with John credited as a writer or an actor in the film. Now, these weren't exactly the flicks you'd go see with your family. No, most of these were the more avant-garde, arty-farty type of short films, made for people who wear turtlenecks too often. Let's check them out. No, Two Virgins is not about a Weezer fan meeting a Radiohead fan. Instead, it's a short film meant to accompany the pair's 1968 album, Unfinished Music No. 1, Two Virgins, which is basically a sound collage, made out of a series of tape loops, instruments being tested out, sound effects, talking, and of course, Yoko screaming. It's kind of similar to Revolution 9 from the Beatles' is a White album, and if you've never heard Revolution 9, make sure it stays that way. The album was rather controversial because, you know, the cover art is literally just John Lennon and Yoko Ono letting it all hang out. Although the cover was full of nudity, the 19 minute long film featured them both fully clothed, mainly consisting of John and Yoko's faces superimposed on each other for 10 whole minutes. After which we get a new shot, where they then slowly walk towards each other and start hugging and kissing each other, again for 10 minutes. I mean, if they took their clothes off, it'd be a bit more exciting. It's soundtracked by the album, and all in all, it's just a bunch of simping, really. <laughs> film number five, also known as Smile, was filmed on the same day as Two Virgins, June 9th, 1968, debuting alongside on November 14th of that year. This was a follow-up to Yoko's film number four in 1966, which consists entirely of bums. I'm not kidding, it's literally just asses for 6 minutes. Number 5 on the other hand is 51 minutes of John Lennon's face, filmed in super slow motion as he smiles. This was shot with a camera meant for filming footage of rockets so in real time, John only smiled for 3 minutes, and the film drags it out to nearly an hour. The soundtrack for the film just includes stuff like birds chirping, aeroplanes, and some weird noises, which are supposed to give the sense that the visuals are at normal speed, like you're having a nightmare after eating too much cheese. When they first showcased this film, half the audience walked out. I don't blame them. Unless you had the hots for John Lennon and want to stare at him for 51 minutes, it gets tedious real quick. It'd be even more tedious if they made a 5 hour long version, which was the original intention. Even if half the audience walked out, John stated that the idea of the film won't really be dug for another 50 or 100 years probably, so I'm sure in 2068 this will have all the film bros giving it 5 stars on Letterboxd. Next up, we have a more conventional film the 1969 documentary Bed Peace. In that year, John and Yoko really wanted to promote peace, almost as hard as YouTubers promote NordVPN. So what did they decide to do? Stay in bed. They did their first bed in for peace in Amsterdam, then did another one in Montreal, which the film documents. Mostly it's just them talking about peace and human rights and being interviewed by the press, who are expecting something a little more raunchy given the whole Two Virgins cover art controversy. Near the end we get footage of John's song Give Peace a Chance being recorded in their hotel room with all their friends. So as you can see, they really wanted to promote peace and love man. I'm warning you with peace and love. Though Yoko may have taken it a bit far by saying Jewish women could have helped the Austrian tiny moustache man by sleeping with him. Although global peace hasn't yet been achieved, this whole bed peace thing gave us the line, I'm gonna start a revolution from my bed cause you said the brains I had went to my head in Oasis' song Don't Look Back in Anger, which Noel Gallagher learned was said by Lennon during a taped conversation from the book Revolution in the Head. Now we get to the really weird stuff. Self portrait sounds as if it'd just be like film number 5 right? It's not. It's John Lennon's semi erect ding dong, once again filmed in slow motion. How long is it? Well, I'd say it looks about average- Oh, you meant the film. <clears throat> 42 minutes. That's right, 42 minutes of a dick flick. Cock kino. Schlong cinema. And it's only been shown once in 1969 and never again. You can't find it. Trust me, I looked. This might be because Yoko wanted to record the audience watching the film, then combine them to create a split screen presentation. However, at the showing, the cameras failed to record anything, so she couldn't do that. Or it might be because the audience weren't really into staring at John Lennon's walrus for that long. The original intention was to have John's yellow submarine go up and down, but the final product simply consists of his half awake cold turkey, ending with a single drop of, uh, sailors, which he said was accidental. Maybe one day, Yoko will release this masterpiece. 
The next film is called Something That Rhymes With Cape, although there's actually no suggestive nor really violent material in it. Released in 1970, it's a 77 minute long film showcasing a camera crew following a young woman over three days through city streets and into her apartment. This was all totally candid as well by the way, she didn't know what was going on. Now it's not like they just found a random woman on the streets and did this. No, like a darker version of Punk, they set this all up with her sister, even getting the keys to her apartment. What is this film supposed to represent? Well, two things. It symbolizes the nature of celebrity and fame, which John and Yoko were very familiar with, and how although at first it seems enticing, like how the woman in this film is initially flattered, it turns into a grueling attack on the person as they are fetishized and their privacy constantly invaded. Yoko has said about the film, all of us are exposed and under pressure in our contemporary world. Furthermore, it showcases the male gaze and the mistreatment of women within cinema, whilst making the audience feel as if they are complicit in this. The woman in the film, Eva Mailata, is from Hungary and can't speak English and her passport has expired, further adding to a real reaction of helplessness and fear. Ultimately, the film forces us to get up close and personal with seeing someone else's space and autonomy get invaded, making us reconsider the way women are viewed in conventional cinema and if it's really that different from what's happening here. And in a tragic case of life imitating art, after moving back to Hungary, Eva Mailata was murdered in 2008. Overall, this is one film out of the group that has a real impact on the viewer and isn't too murky in its meaning. Moving on to a much shorter film, we have Freedom, also released in 1970. Only two minutes long, it consists of a shot of Yoko Ono's chest as she slowly takes off her bra. Just before the bra is fully opened, the film ends, leaving all the perverts disappointed before they remember they can just get a Two Virgins album. So what the hell is it about? Yoko plays with the audience's sense of anticipation and is trying to symbolize a metaphor for the liberation of the female body. The fact that we never see her fully open the bra may be seen as her saying liberation is truly yet to come, but what do I know, I'm an idiot on YouTube. An actual film critic, Scott McDonald, says the film is paradoxical, with Yoko showing freedom as the ability to try and break free, which shows that you're never really free. Okay, now let's get to some more weird stuff. 1970 also gave us Fly, a 25 minute long film involving close up shots of a fly walking around the body of a fully naked woman, including her lady garden. Although actually there wasn't just one fly, they used loads. These flies are real divas, sugar water and carbon dioxide were used to control them. Though I'm sure they were easier to work with than Jared Leto. Accompanying the film is a soundtrack, using songs from Yoko's album with the same name, basically consisting of her making noises, which are supposed to be from the perspective of the fly. By the end, the woman, whose name is rather fittingly Virginia Lust, has multiple flies on her body before the shots change to showcasing the outside of the New York apartment the film's shot in. Fly can be seen as an early feminist film, as we follow the flies exploring the body, and by the end we think nothing of the nudity, as we watch the flies explore the landscape of the human fall. Yoko made the film wondering if people would look at the fly or the body, saying she thought about that joke where someone says to a man, did you notice that woman's hat, and he's looking at her bosom instead. 1970's last film would be Apotheosis, filmed in 1969 while the couple were making a documentary for the BBC. John and Yoko travelled to the village of Lavenham in Suffolk, England, where they released a weather balloon with a camera inside. In the 18 minute long film, we briefly see John and Yoko as the balloon rises up, past the snow covered town and into the clouds, blasting the image with white, before breaking through the clouds and into the blue sky, after which the film ends as the film stock runs out. If you're wondering what the title means, it's defined as either the highest point in the development of something culmination or climax, or the elevation of someone to divine status. So like, the balloon going up represents something going up bro. In 1971 we got Up Your Legs Forever, 70 minutes of 367 pairs of legs, as the camera pans up from their feet, just before reaching their nether regions, and the next pair come in, that's it, that is literally it. Oh wait, it ends with John and Yoko's asses, because of course it does. All the participants were paid one dollar and got a photograph taken of them by Lennon. The sound for the film consists of comments made during the recording, with John reading the credits out loud at the end. So what the hell is this one supposed to be about? Well, Yoko said we can't have peace until we expose ourselves to each other. So evidently, it's supposed to represent... Uh, um, You know what? I'll pass it on to my good friend Uppius Arceus. What do you think, Opius? Well, the legs clearly represent an homage to Fellini, whilst the shot of the buttocks is quite plainly a dig at Tarantino. All in all, a rather spiffing example of neo-existentialism, with terrific mise-en-scene and omelette du fromage. 2 out of 10. 
and for our penultimate entry, we have Erection. Oh no, not again. We've had enough of John Lennon's wiener. Well, calm down because it's not about sausages, it's about a building being constructed. And if you think that sounds boring, you're dead right. This is just 18 minutes of a bunch of still photographs showing a hotel being built. Lennon had a cameraman take a photo every Friday over the course of one and a half years, resulting in this film where we can see the hotel slowly coming together, ending with it finally finished. The inspiration for it was because Lennon said that when he would spend time away from any city and then return, he'd see new buildings constructed. The sound for the film was again taken from songs in the previously mentioned Fly album by Yoko. Overall, out of all of the films in the world, I'd say this is without a doubt one of them. And lastly, we come to 1972's Imagine. Essentially, this is just a series of music videos laced together, mainly just showing John and Yoko chilling and recording the Imagine album. Interspersed are some scenes which are basically John and Yoko just messing around for shits and giggles. So it's predominantly footage of them going about their daily lives in London, New York, and their home in Titanus Park. Soundtrack by the songs with some little stage scenes sprinkled in between. It starts with a well-known video for the song Imagine, and then goes on to showcase the rest of the songs on the Imagine album, along with some songs from Yoko's Fly album. The film includes numerous friends of John and Yoko, such as George Harrison, Andy Warhol and Dick Cavett, among others. This was actually one of the first musical album based films, and the only real dialogue within it is Good Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So there it is, the films of John Lennon and Yoko Ono. What a bunch of weirdos. Speaking of John Lennon, hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Tell me in the comments if you think these films are arty farty nonsense, or if they're actually really deep. Don't forget to subscribe for more content, and thanks for watching.